What's up people, welcome to Home Chefonomics, where today we're saving money while cooking 15 minute smash burgers. These are crisp on the outside, juicy on the inside, and they don't break the bank. Each smash burger costs just $2.92. Check the link in description for a detailed recipe and cost breakdown. Let's get cooking. We'll need some oil for these. I'm going for grapeseed oil for its neutral flavor and excellent performance at high temperatures. We don't need much at all, a tablespoon should do. Burner on low, and we'll let that heat up just a bit while we prep our burgers. Cast iron takes a while to heat up, so I like to do this so I don't have to wait too long to cook once I'm prepped. Mixing bowl here with some salt and a half pound of ground beef. I used half of this package previously, that's why it looks like that. We'll make two quarter pound burgers out of this half pound of beef. I like to add a little pinch of salt for each quarter pound of beef, thus two pinches here. We'll add more salt later. In with the beef and gently mix with the salt. Don't go crazy here, 20 seconds will do. Lightly pack that mixture into a ball. Don't press too hard or your burgers will be dense. I actually went a bit too far here myself, but the show must go on. Karate chop that in half and smooth each half into a new ball. My right ball was bigger than my left, but hey, nothing a little surgery can't fix. And perfect. Wait, how do you do this? Uh, whatever, moving on. Our cast iron should be warmed up by now, so we'll crank the heat to medium high for our burgers. It's crucial that our pan be ripping hot for these to turn out well. The oil should easily move around the pan, feel warm against the back of your hand, and a good trick is to flick a bit of water on the surface and it should sound like this. Yep, that's good to go. We'll need a spatula and something with some heft to smash these. I'm using a mason jar, but use whatever you got. Position your balls in the center of the pan, that is a lovely sound, and press the daylights out of them. Really press them down. We want to flatten these and maximize contact with the pan to form a beautiful caramelized crust. Give your spatch a light tap to release your burger. A light tap. A light tap. A LIGHT TAP! Okay, maybe rub a little oil on the back of your spatula so the burgers will release more easily than mine did. Pinch of salt atop each of these bad boys and we'll leave them here. No touching for about three minutes. This will give us that crust we're after. If you're cooking indoors like me, open a window or turn the microwave exhaust on to mitigate the smoke. While these cook, I'll slice my cheese. I have a block of sharp cheddar here. I like using a block for its versatility. I can slice it or shred it to use across multiple dishes. This saves me money. Back into its packaging, and with a nice twist and tuck method, no need to waste a plastic baggie to store this back in the fridge. Quick check on our burgers, and yeah, they're doing well. Important note here, you can see how much these shrink up while cooking. Next time I make these, I'll smash them down again while on this side to spread them back out. Three minutes in, use the back side of the spatula to scrape and release the underside of the burgers and flip. That, right there, you see that? That's why we didn't touch them while they cooked. Smash them back down, add a pinch of salt, and they'll cook on this side for another two to three minutes. Two minutes later, turn off the heat and add your cheese. Slap a lid on there, remove it from the heat, and let the steam inside the pan melt the cheese for one minute. Here we are. Fresh bachelor here so I don't kill anybody. That's probably number one on my list of kitchen goals and should be on your list as well. And again, I'll use the back of the spatch to loosen my burger bottoms and lift them from the pan. These boys are looking tasty. Quick scrape of the pan to remove any unsavory bits and directly in with our buns. These will toast in here on medium low heat. About one minute on the first side and let's flip. The leftover fat from the burgers makes an excellent base to toast these buns, and we aren't wasting time, money, and resources using a separate fat or a separate pan. Just flip these every minute or so until they achieve optimal toastification. These look great to me, so out they go, and we are ready to assemble our smash burgers. Toasty buns. Some Heinz tomato ketchup here. I much prefer this to that tomato ketchup they use over in Canada. Some Hellman's vegan mayo, because this channel used to be vegan and now it, uh, isn't. A good lathering on both buns because I'm a complete maniac. On with the smash, daddy. And proper ketchup technique is to gently squeeze the bottle while rotating in a circular motion until you get a perfect little swirl. Isn't that nice? Top goes on bottom, just kidding, it goes on top. And there it is, our very own smash burger. This isn't fancy schmancy by any means, but we made it in about 15 minutes in one pan and it is super tasty. I mean, look how much I'm enjoying this. It gets the thumbs up. It also gets the counter smack. That's how you know it's good. That's it. 15 minute smash burgers, go make them. Let me know how it goes in the comments or on any of my social accounts. They are so tasty, so easy, and so cheap.
What a beautiful world. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. A massive thanks to my patrons for supporting my attempts to create informative, enjoyable, informative content. See you next time.